Hey, what's up guys? In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the starter on this Volkswagen T4. The starting mechanism on the car is quite simple. You've got this big motor which uses 1.8 kilowatts. Then you've got this solenoid which will basically push this wheel, this bracket and connect it to the flywheel. And once it's on, it will spin and turn the flywheel and that's how, how you can start the engine. Another component is the wiring from the battery. They are going to be short and thick in order to deliver that amperage required for this motor to use 1.8 kilowatts. If the connection is bad or it does allow just a little bit of power, then this is not going to be powerful enough to spin the flywheel. And when you turn the key in the ignition, you're going to hear just a click. And that means that this one is engaged, but it doesn't have enough power to spin the flywheel. So if you hear that click, it means you might have a voltage drop or something that does not allow the full voltage and amperage to travel to the motor. Right, so the starter on this car is located down there, right next to the transmission. You can actually see it better from under the car. There is the solenoid and the motor. And I connected one of my voltmeter terminals right on the 12 volt supply, the positive wire which comes from the positive car battery. I turn the voltmeter to 20 volts direct current and the second terminal of the voltmeter is on the positive terminal of the car battery. Now when I start the car, I'm gonna see if there is any voltage drop. If for example, starter clicks when you turn the key in the third position, then you'll probably see a voltage drop like three or four volts. And the less voltage drop you see, the better it is, the better the connection from the car battery is. Right, so in my situation the voltage drop is within spec, it's not that much. From this point if you've got like 2 or 3 volts you have to inspect the connections because if this is corroded then the voltage will not travel through the solenoid and further to the motor. Another issue is that when this solenoid can fail randomly and it will not start the car and you need to hit it with a hammer if you need to do that, then this solenoid is bad and you will have to replace the whole starter, even though the motor is okay. And in general, by the way, these motors are quite reliable. There's not much that can go wrong. It's the solenoid which goes wrong most of the time because it's the one that pushes this bracket on. It's the switching mechanism. And as you can see, it's kind of exposed to all sorts of corrosion or water or depending of the driving situations. In my situation, and now I get to the another issue that can happen is when it's cold outside, this solenoid will cease to work. You basically, you don't hear anything. You just turn the key in the ignition and nothing happens. That's only because of the solenoid. When I come to the car, was not starting. And when I hit on the solenoid, the car starts fine. So as a preventive maintenance, the owner of this car wants to replace the starter and be safe. Now, of course, another reason that the car will not start is a bad battery, which will basically not deliver that necessary amperage. Even though the connection can be good, the battery can be bad and it's weak. So a simple test like this can determine that. I've got here a simple battery tester. I'm going to use English Europe and this battery has 850 cranking amps 850 and let's press enter the life of the battery 73 percent result is okay so the battery is okay in my situation if you do not have one of these battery tester you can still do the test with a voltmeter you've got the voltage of the battery now when you start the car the voltage will not drop below 10 if you see like 9.5 volts when you start the car it means that the starter is okay it takes that power, but the battery is not able to provide enough power for the starter. Right now, you go and start the car and you should see. So with that being said, now let's go ahead and remove the starter from this car. So as you can see, the jack stand is holding the car from that point. If you have a closer look, you've got basically three bolts which holds the starter on. I connect this bolt extractor on my drill, so let's see. Now, the second attempt, I hammer a Torx socket. I will try to apply pressure while I twist again. 
Nah, no way. As you can see, I broke basically the socket. The socket is bended. Unbelievable. All right, guys. So finally, after a lot of uh, filing on the bolt and grinding it up, I was able to place a 11 millimeter socket. The bolt comes out right now. Was very stuck in there. Indeed, I need a lot of torque, but now it turns. So that's a good sign. When you make space for the socket for such a bolt, which was a Torx before or whatever it is here on the top, make sure that the socket will sit very, very tight. I actually, I was hammering the socket on the bolt in its position, so it will not round up again. In that way, you're going to be able to apply the maximum torque required to remove the bolt. Now I can show you better the bolt and how it looks like. You can see I had to grind it up on one side because I had access and I made it flat on the other side. I tried to grind it up a little bit, but was not going as I wanted because it was tight space. So I had to use one of these files and make that surface a little bit flat. So my wrench will fit. Now the starter comes out and the only thing left is to disconnect it from the solenoid. So with the 13 millimeter socket, remove that nut which holds the wires on the solenoid. And then you've got a small connector on the back, just press on the tab and remove it as well. And here it comes, the starter is out. And you can see one of the reasons I have to replace the starter, this one is moving and it should not move like that. It's a lot of play for a starter. This starter will not work like that for a long time, so definitely needed replacement. Now it's time to brush these connectors, make them free of rust and any debris. So take your time and do this job properly and you will have a long lasting connection point. And down there you can see the flywheel. I'm gonna place a hex bolt on the back, which is very hard to get access. Now it's time to connect the wirings. This is a 13 millimeter nut on the old starter and the new one. So now everything is in position. I'm going to apply some silicone paste on these connectors so they will last much longer. All right guys, so as you could hear, the car starts fast without any noise. Before this starter was making some weird noises because probably this one was not putting the enough RPMs necessary for the engine to start easy. So that was it guys, job done. Thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel and you want to see more car repair videos, hit that subscribe button. Also check out the other videos I made about this Volkswagen T4 if you need so. And until next time, drive safe so I can see you soon.